Thousands of years before the first stiletto heel stepped onto Rodeo Drive, this was the land of our native Tongva. We know very little about our indigenous people, except they ran around naked most of the year in our beautiful sunshine and thrived on the abundant game in our canyons. Well, that all changed on August 3rd, 1769, in the swampy area that came to be known as La Cienega. Our first tourists, the conquistadors of the Portola expedition, described encountering natives who howled like wolves and offered seeds to show the abundance of the land. The natives gave the Spanish something to eat. The Spanish gave the Tongva smallpox. Soon, these proud and gentle people had all but vanished from the land they called the Gathering of the Waters. Except this one, who will watch over us forever from the top of our electric fountain. Now you're probably wondering, what's this old guy in a letterman's jacket doing here standing near the corner of Alpine and Sunset? Well, I'm here because the story of Beverly Hills begins right about here. This land was an arid, treeless desert, but right here, the waters flow down from Benedict, Coldwater, and Franklin Canyons. So this was the richest and most fertile land in this entire area. And this is the spot where our very first settler built the very first house in what is now Beverly Hills. Now, most people don't know this, but Beverly Hills' first landowner was a woman, and a California-born African Latina at that. Her name was Maria Rita Valdez de Villa, and she was married to a Spanish soldier. They had eight children, seven of them girls. After the defeat of the Spanish, the governor of Mexico thought, what perfect settlers with all those daughters, and deeded them a 4,000 acre plot of Alta California and the land we now call Beverly Hills. For two brief decades, life in this area was as colorful as the senorita's dresses. Songs and laughter and the sounds of the guitar mingled with the rippling of the spring. When Maria Rita's husband died, she became the sole proprietor of this whole rancho. She employed a few remaining native tongvas to help her raise crops and let her cattle graze freely. Ironically, in the days before refrigerators, cattle weren't raised for their meat. It was the hides that had value and even became known as California currency. Rancheros could pay debts in ox hides folded sideways, hair side out and stiff as boards. Each hide was valued at $2, which might not sound like much, except if you consider that when Maria had to buy her cousin out of his half of Beverly Hills, she paid just $17. The Villas family ran this place from 1831 to 1854, and Maria might have stayed on longer, but in 1852, the rancho was attacked by Indians. Legend says it may have only been three or four Indians, and they were renegades and poachers, but they laid siege on the adobe with deadly intentions. Finally, the Villas' only son snuck out through a dry riverbed and gathered a posse near present-day West Hollywood. The cowboys rode up to Sunset and Alpine and chased the Indians back into Benedict Canyon. So the posse chases the Indians up into Benedict Canyon to a spot right about here. And a furious battle ensues and the Indians are defeated. How do we know that Chevy Chase in Benedict Canyon is such a historic spot? Well, that's because when they were digging the foundation for the women's club, they found the Indian skeletons and they found the arrowheads and they put up a plaque that says, this tablet marks the site of the battle between the Indians and the early Californians, right here in Beverly Hills.